Oh, my bad. What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is your Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Season 9, Episode 17 review. So, look. This is a little filler episode. But a couple of things went down in this episode that I'm not really necessarily crazy about. I'm going to go ahead and say my little two cents on it. First of all, I'm so sick of these parents that let their children run the household. We're going to get there in a minute. We're going to get there in a minute. So we start this episode off. <clears throat> we see what the ladies are doing. Um, they start off showing us a scene when the ladies are uh, with the fires. If you remember a few months back when the fires were going on in California, it was like three different fires and a lot of people's homes were destroyed and a whole lot of celebrities because it went through Malibu, which is where a lot of celebrities live. Um, I don't know if you remember hearing the news where um, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian hired a fire, a private firefighter company to protect their home, but they also protected their whole street. So I ain't mad at you. See, when you have money, you use money. And when you use money for things like that, I can't even be mad about it. I, I just can't be mad about it. Um, and then we flash back to five days earlier. So we see where... Um, Erica Jane and Lisa Renner go to lunch. And they sort of recap what happened at the Halloween party and everything and how fun it was to be Erica Jane and all that. I want to be Erica Jane shit. Um, then we uh, they talk about the whole Camille situation. And, you know, how Camille's talking about the ladies behind their back and stuff like that. And, you know, and Lisa, to Lisa's credit, Lisa was like, look, had I not gotten pissed off at Camille, I never would have said anything about the whole Dorit situation. I got mad, you know, and later on in the episode, they tried to get Lisa to tell exactly what Camille said. And Lisa was like, no, you talk to Camille. Let Camille tell you herself what she said. Now, on one side, I respect that. But on the other side, that irritates my soul. Don't start telling me something and then don't tell me the whole story. That pisses me. Oh, see, then I'm going to get mad at you. Because my thing is, if you're not going to tell me the whole story, don't, don't tell me shit. But I understand where Lisa's coming from. It's like she was running her mouth. And then it was kind of like, oh. Didn't mean to say that much. But I don't care. At that point, you just said it now. Go on and finish the story. But neither here nor there. So then we have, um, is it Kyle next? Kyle um, getting ready to plan another trip. And I guess when, when the ladies are filming, I guess they're told that between these months and these months, you have to keep your schedule relatively clear. because. They be planning these trips and have like two days to get ready to go. And for them to be so busy, they so ready to jump on a plane to go on the other side of the world. I'm like, because they're going to Provence. And I'm like, if this was supposed to be five days earlier, the scene they showed at the beginning was them in the car on their way to the airport to go to Provence. And I'm like, so in five days, they planned a trip to Provence and cleared their calendars and got packed and got everything they needed to go to Europe again lifestyles of the rich and famous right so we see kyle get it together kyle and them damn dogs honey she brought the dogs inside to make a phone call to tell them to stop barking now they were outside barking and i don't know if she had workers in the yard or something but it was a reason why she brought the dogs in but then of course they're barking and they're being dogs because whatever they were barking at outside they still barking at and she on the phone trying to make this phone call it was funny poor kyle kyle and them dogs are hilarious to me um but they're so cute so, this was the first thing that kind of pissed me off. We got Lisa Renner, Harry, and the girls. And all the girls are home. And Lisa's saying how, you know, it's so rare for them to all be around each other and be together. And, they, you know, so Harry's cooking. You know, he's the cook of the family. He's cooking. And they're all out there. And, oh, excuse me, y'all. I'm sorry. Her daughter, who, um, what's, what's, uh, which one? The one that had um the eating disorder she was being really bitchy okay and part of it part of it was that i think she's sort of had a relapse with her eating because she wasn't eating and she was like um it's not the lala it's the other one i'm sorry y'all but she was like well i can't eat it because i'm just allergic to everything you ain't allergic to everything. You ain't developed no allergies overnight to food. Like, come on. This is your this is your parents and your sister. So Lisa knew that it was more to it than her just um 
well, I'm just not hungry right now. She was really worried about her daughter relapsing because, you know, eating disorder is just like anything else. You could do really, really well and then you relapse. And it's an ongoing battle for a really long time. It doesn't just go away overnight. And so if you have a daughter that's dealing with a, a eating disorder and now she's like, I don't want to eat. I'm not hungry. I'm allergic to food. It does send up a red flag. However, it doesn't excuse bad behavior. She was being really disrespectful in my mind. She was being, and she was being rude to Harry. And I think part of it was Harry was maybe hurt that she wasn't eating his food. But I think, again, that for them, there are certain things that are red flags. And so they were trying to get her to eat. And the more they tried to get her to eat, the more combative she got. And to the point where at one point she put up her middle finger at Harry Hamblin. And my thing is, that's your damn daddy. And see, y'all see this thing with, with middle finger? This your finger? My finger would be like this. It'd be a nub. If my daddy ever thought that I thought about putting up my middle finger at him, this is what y'all would see right here. I wouldn't even have no finger. It'd be gone, right? And I'm just like, and Lisa was like, don't do that, don't do that. And I get it that she's an adult. Like, she's not a child, she's not an adult. But for as much as I cuss, y'all hear me on here, I cuss all the time. I don't cuss around my parents. And I'm, a, I'm a way grown-ass woman. I'm way growner than her. You know what I mean? I don't even, my parents, I live alone. I pay my own bills, all of that. But it's just the level of respect that I was raised with that it's just not something I do. Now, I'm not saying people who curse around their parents are disrespectful. That's their relationship. I'm talking about me because I'm not passing judgment on anybody else. But I do feel like what she was doing was disrespectful to her father. And I didn't, it just wasn't cool. It, it just wasn't cool. And I'm so sick of these parents making excuses for bad behavior. I, I'm just... You know, yes, she has an eating disorder and yes, she has. But Harry was clearly irritated and he was clearly, I don't know if hurt is the word, but he was definitely irritated by the whole situation. And I just thought that her daughter was really rude in that moment. And I think Lisa's torn between pushing her. But I also think there's just been throughout their childhood, it's probably been a certain level of passive aggressive with that damn behavior. But anyway, so um, then we get to. Kyle. Kyle had to close her store. And, you know, she was really upset about that. And she was talking about having to close her store. The ladies are going out to lunch. I'm sorry. And Kyle is telling them about having to close her store and everything. And she was saying that the rent was just too high. And with people doing online shopping, it just wasn't feasible for her to keep the store open. But she is trying to find another space that's a little cheaper. And she's really, you know, upset that her workers are out of a job and that kind of thing. But my thing is, unfortunately, stuff closes all the time. And if you gave them notice, which you did, they knew they had to find a job. And I feel bad for them because I've, I've been there and done that. Like I've been in jobs that closed and I had to figure it out and they gave us notice. And so, you know, you have time to figure it out. You know, nobody's, you know, it, shit happens. Um, But I definitely understand where Kyle's coming from and I feel her empathy on it. Um, The other thing at lunch is that Kyle is still a little irritated at how Lisa was acting at the Halloween party and how she talked to her sister she said, you know, at some point, I guess I'll talk about it, but this ain't it. You know, this ain't the time. Oh, Dorit had a photo shoot. I'm going to get back to that because something happened at the photo shoot that I want to address. Uh, but the ladies are at lunch and they're talking about the Provence trip and who can go and who can't. And of course, at this point, everybody can go. Miraculously, they so busy. Teddy got this business, but she can, she can go to Provence, honey, and leave her kids with her business and her husband and, you know. But like I said, they, they must know that they have to keep their schedule clear for these things. Because don't nobody plan a trip to Provence in five days. Like, I don't give a fuck who you are. Unless it's an emergency situation. Ain't nobody going to Provence for vacation in five days. Like, ain't nobody doing that. But um, the other thing they talked about, of course, they talked about Camille. And whether Camille was coming on the trip, whether she was invited, when they were going to talk to Camille, how they were going to address Camille, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um... What else did we talk about? Mm, that's pretty much it. I ain't really getting to nothing deep. Um, back to Dorit and her photo shoot. So Dorit is doing a photo shoot. She's doing active wear with her Beverly Beach line. She's expanding into active wear. And she also has some children's um, wear. And so she was at a photo shoot. And her son, Jagger, who is the cutest thing, he's her um, model for the children's wear. And honey, he was just as cute as he could be. And he was ready. He said, Mommy, I'm gonna do my best poses. Oh, he was so ready. She he said, she said, You gotta help mommy sell sell her swim trunks. It was cute. 
But here's my problem. Now, Dorit was ready for a change. She was like, I need my second look. His other um, box, you know, his other bathing suit. And her assistant was like, oh, I forgot those. And Dorit was like, what do you mean forgot them? What do you mean? Oh, no. Sorry. And I was like, first of all, I'm going to need you to have a sense of urgency. Second of all, I'm going to need you to act like you give a damn. Because like Dorit said, whenever mistakes like this are made, that's time and money wasted. Like, it's not, you know, like, and what she's doing is she's taking the pictures for, um, she's going to be in Kinston. And if you guys remember, I don't know if you, uh, many, 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 many years ago with the whole Paris Hilton, Kardashian, Nicole Richie or whatever, Kinston was like their shit. Like, they were always at Kinston. And um, so she's doing, so Kinston is is a, a big staple in Beverly Hills. So she's doing a wall um, preview for it. I mean, a wall window display for it. And so, you know, she was really excited about that. So, of course, she was stressed out. But how about, and it's not that I feel like the, that the assistant need to be fired because she made a mistake. People make mistakes. I just need you to act like you give a damn that you made a mistake. And I need you to tell me you made the mistake before I ask you for the swim trunks. Let me know you forgot them. Because she went from I forgot them to they had a stain on them. Well, which one is it? Did they have a stain on them or did you forget them? Or did you leave them because they had a stain on them and then you didn't tell me? And that's what Dorit was saying. Dorit was like, well, had you let me know, we could have made some other arrangements. We could have done something different. Hell, we might have been able to shoot around the stain depending on where the stain was. But now I just got the same look in all my pictures and I'm not selling my products. So I need her... I just need you to have some sense of urgency with your shit um, if you're my assistant. So then they talked about um, the Camille thing again, of course. And this is where Dorit was like, well, Lisa, just tell us what she said. Tell us what she said. And Lisa was like, mm -mm, nope, I ain't going to get into all the details. Just suffice to say that she talking shit. So then we see Camille and Camille is sort of, re, you know, she's like, the, the, you know, she's still talking shit. She's back at home. She's with her, her friend Kimberly. And is that her husband she was sitting there with? I don't know. But it was a guy there. And she's talking about the wedding and stuff. And then she goes talking about Teddy again. Now, supposedly, Teddy, her daughter tried to speak to Teddy at the airport when they were flying back. And Teddy didn't speak back. I don't think Teddy put that much energy into ignoring you. I think that. Maybe Teddy didn't hear her or she spoke and you didn't hear Teddy speak back. I don't think Teddy, Teddy doesn't seem like the kind of person that would not speak to the daughter because she's mad at the mother. Like that just don't, that just doesn't ring of her person. Teddy, Teddy has a lot of things with that. That's just not that level of petty. I think that she's on, but whatever. So then we have a blast from the past, honey. Denise Richards has um, dinner with Brandy, um, Brandy, uh, what was Brandy's last name? Gr Gr Granville, Granville. Am I saying that right? I feel like I'm giving her a different last name. But y'all know who I'm talking about. Brandy, who was on um, the show for the first couple of seasons, who was married to the man who um, Leanne Rhyme, was it Leanne Rhyme stole her husband? I think it was Leanne Rhyme stole her husband. And come to find out they're friends to a mutual friend and they have, you know, they get along well. You know, they both had public divorces and, you know, they just, they have fun. And they got to talking about um, LVP. And Brandy was like, look, me and Lisa, me and Lisa were friends for a really long time. Like we really were genuinely friends. And basically I got kicked to the curb because I did not lie for her. I, and, you know, Denise Richards was like, well, did you defend yourself or did you just, um, or did you betray her? And Brandy was like, I guess I did a little bit of both. And I guess this is one of those seasons that I wasn't watching anymore where, there was something with some tabloids and some and some luggage. And Lisa tried to lie and say she didn't know anything about the tabloids until they got back to L.A. And Brandy was like, that's not true, Lisa. You know, you knew about the tabloids before we left. So it was I don't know the whole story because I wasn't looking at the show then. But basically, Brandy said Lisa ain't talked to her in three years. And she said, you know, and then they brought up the whole Radar Online um, piece of it. And Brandy was like, Lisa did it. She was like, I know Lisa did it. She said, Lisa did it. Lisa has a way of getting what she wants. And she's like, Lisa did it. And see, my thing is, I want to believe that Lisa didn't have nothing to do with it, but it's too many people that know her too well that are like, no, nah, that's her that's her MO. That's the shit that she does. So it could be a, a situation with a boy who cried wolf where normally it's not, like normally Lisa would do something like that, but in this situation, she's innocent. 
But because she's been guilty of doing the exact same thing in the past, nobody believes her. Like, I honestly don't know. And at this point, I don't care. I just don't. Um, the only other thing that came out of the little lunch was Denise then invited Brandy to come to Provence. Now, y'all the most inviting other people to trips that I've ever seen. And you ain't asked Kyle. I don't remember Kyle saying you could bring a plus one. It's nine rooms in the damn chateau. They're saying it's this beautiful chateau, honey. It's nine rooms in the chateau. How you just inviting people all willy-nilly? But, and of course, Brandy coming. So we'll see how that go down because I'm sure there's going to be some drama with that. Again, I wasn't looking at the show the season that, the like, I looked at the first season and then I didn't look at it for a few years. So that whole, whatever happened with Brandy in the middle and all of that. And so I don't know who she cool with and who she's not and how she left everything. I honestly don't know. But interesting. We'll see how that plays itself out. So then we see Denise and her husband talking. And this is the other thing I wanted to address when we talk about these kids. The husband is sort of complaining to Denise about the daughters and them being sloppy and not cleaning up behind themselves and stuff. And Denise is telling him, well, you know, you just got to figure out how to talk to teenage girls. You know, I, I want to talk to her about it, but you know, I just got to figure out the best way to address her because, you know, she's a teenager. I'm like, bitch, if you don't tell her to pick her shit up, he said, well, she uses every towel in the house and then leaves it in the floor. And then when I ask her to pick it up, I, you know, she gives me attitude. Ain't no maids around here. If you don't pick them damn towels up and put them in the laundry room, better yet, put them in the washing machine, put some detergent in that shit and set the cycle. How about that? And then come back in 30 minutes and put them shits in the dryer. How about that? See, I don't understand that. All that, well, I have to figure out the best way to talk to her. Is she paying bills? Is she paying bills in that house? You figure out the best way to talk to her when she's signing checks. Well, don't nobody write checks no more. But you know what I'm saying. When money is transferred out of her account, going to the light bill, electric bill, mortgage, car note, car insurance, then she can talk about what she is and isn't going to do. Until then, if you don't pick them damn tiles up and take them to the laundry room, I like you, Denise, but mm -mm, mm -mm, no, we're not going to sit here and coddle no damn child. That ain't what we're doing. That is just not what we're doing. So anyway, we see Kyle and Erica going shopping, and they they pass by Kyle's empty store. And of course, she talks again about you know being so upset about um the store closing and her trying to find another space. And that's when Camille calls back and says she will be able to go to uh, Provence. And so all right, we're going to Provence. Now they had decided that that they were going to um confront Camille and and Provence about her two side her two facedness. But that's when we find out about the wildfires. And Camille's house and Denise's house are in danger of burning down. They left it sort of hanging about what Denise, on, they talked to Denise on the phone and Denise said, I think my house burned down. And then Camille was saying that she could see the fire as they were evacuating. So I honestly, I think I remember something in the news during that time about Camille's house, I think. I don't know if I remember anything about Denise's house, but either way, it's a sad situation and I feel bad. I mean, a fire is so, it's just so permanent and, you know, it just takes everything. Like if you get robbed, they take items, but the majority of your house and your belongings are still there. But a fire, it's just gone. It's just gone. So I feel for them. You know, I don't know. We'll know next week, I guess, um, better what really went down. Or I guess I could Google it if I want to know that bad. But um, I just feel bad for them. You know, again, having money doesn't mean that tragedy It doesn't hit the same way, you know. So anyway, that's what went down. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments, please.